Hello, this is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman from the Jewish Executive Learning Network and BregmanSuccess.com. You might say we're going to interrupt the regularly scheduled programming to do a different kind of video today. Uh, according to my regular schedule of content that I was going to put on my YouTube channel, today I was supposed to speak about business, uh, work ethic, and I had a clip about making money. But with the situation going on in Israel, in Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, all of the tension, drama, how many innocent Israelis, Jewish people have been murdered, stabbed to death, and attacked in recent days. Um, I have to say something about that. I cannot remain silent. I told somebody today that I was switching gears and I was going to do a video on that. And the person said, well, how do you know you're supposed to speak up? Maybe it'll just be what it'll be and you don't have to say anything. I said, no, 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 you have to say something. And in fact, what I told him, I decided it was going to be the beginning of the video. Share with you a midrash about speaking up and not remaining silent in terms of your connection as a Jew with the land of Israel. This is a midrash. You can find it in Medrash Rabbah, in Parshas Vashanan. The midrash says, Amar Rabbi Levi, Amar Lefana Rabbein Shalaylam. Moshe, Moses, um, before he was going to die, he finds out he's not going to get to go into the land of Israel. And he says, God, Rabbein Shalaylam, at Moisav Shal Yosef, the bones, the remains of Yosef when he died in Egypt, Nichnesula Aretz, they ultimately were dug up and got to come into the land of Eretz Yisrael, to Israel. Um, but you, you just told me I'm never going to get to come into the land. Why is that? I'm never going to get to come into the land. What's that about? So I'm a little Kaddish Baruch Hu. Hashem answers back to Moshe. He who acknowledges his land. Yosef, he acknowledged his land. Deal what that means in a moment. So he gets to be buried in the land. In a nikbar and the one who doesn't admit and acknowledge his connection to the land of Eretz Yisrael, he ain't going to get to be buried in the land of Israel. So what does this mean? And the Midrash goes on to say, Yosef acknowledged the land, and Moshe didn't acknowledge the land. What's this about? So that as the Midrash goes on to say, and I'm just going to move past the Hebrew now to speed it up a drop. What happened was that Yosef, when Joseph was um, sold, to uh, a guy named Potiphar and was working for Potiphar and got into trouble with Aisha's Potiphar, Potiphar's wife. She said all this stuff, oh, this Hebrew, this Jew came to make all this trouble for us. And he, she was, she's sort of mocking that he was a Hebrew and a Jew. And in you look in the Chumash, he goes on to say when he's in, in jail later on, he ends up saying, yeah, 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 I am a Hebrew and I'm I'm from Israel and I was taken from my land. So he did acknowledge that is where he was from and that was his connection. So that's what it means. He acknowledged the connection that people said about him. The people said, hey, he's a Jew. He's a Jew. He's from Israel. He's connected to Israel. And he actually backed it up. Yeah, yeah, it is true. But the Midrash goes on to say, Moshe, Moses didn't do the same thing. When the daughters of Yisro in the Chumash, in the book of Shmos, see Yisro, what do they say about him? They say, 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 oh, uh, an, an, an Egyptian, he, an Egyptian came and he rescued us today from the, from the shepherds who were bothering us. That's what the daughters of Yisro told their father. An Egyptian was bothering us. So who was that, uh, was helping us? Who was the Egyptian? It was Moshe. The Egyptian was Moshe Rabbeinu himself, but they thought he was an Egyptian and he didn't clarify it. He never said, oh no, I am dressed like that, but I'm really, I'm really a Jew and I'm really connected to Israel. The Mitra says, because he didn't acknowledge the land from which he originally comes from, he didn't get to go in. So the, so the Mepharshim, the commentaries on this Midrash ask a good question. It's falling off my desk. Such a good question. They ask a question. They say, but wait a minute, what's this about? Because Moses, he, he actually never lived in Israel. He was born in Egypt. He was from Egypt. So why is he going to acknowledge the land and speak about the land? And Yosef what did Yosef do? Yosef, he actually was from Israel and was stolen away and kidnapped away. And so, of course, he acknowledged the land. Of course, he said it was where he's from. Why is Moses held accountable for not acknowledging his connection to the land uh, of Israel as a Jew, even though he had never been there before and the Jewish nation had never lived there as a whole? So what's that about? So the commentaries explain something very simple. And that is, if you're a Yid, if you're a Jew... 
You have to speak up about your connection to the land of Israel. Doesn't matter if you've never been there before. Doesn't matter if you never lived there before. Since Hashem promised the in the Torah, the land of Israel to the Jewish people from the time of Abraham, 4,000 years ago, it's four with a lot of zeros after it. Since that time, you are connected to the land of Israel. And when something goes down there, something happens, or somebody questions your connection, shows where you're from, you have to know in your heart where you're from, but it's not enough. You have to speak up. And from the fact that Moshe didn't speak up, yeah, I know you think I look like I'm dressed like an Egyptian, but I'm not. He, sh he should have been said something along those lines because of that. On his high spiritual level, he didn't merit to get buried in the land. So number one, things happen in the land of Israel. Yeah, you have to speak up. You have to say something. Now, people who may be aware of it ask me like, well, what am I supposed to say? Or what am I supposed to do? Or what should be my reaction? What should be my response? So I'll tell you as short as I can uh, a Torah idea that might be helpful in terms of a specific response, which would be an authentic Torah response. See, it's very interesting. A lot of people, when things go on in Israel or politically in the world, they say, oh, let's make a, a rally and let's make a sign and let's post things on Facebook, how this political leader is, is incompetent and let's respond in that kind of way. And certainly there's a lot of things we could do in that sphere as well. But the primary response as a Jew always has to be that directed from the Torah, which is to figure out what does God want from us? What is the lesson? And respond in a spiritual, spiritually directed, productive way, because we ultimately believe that is the solution. In the Michtam Elio, the writings of Rav Dessler, he says something interesting. He said that God always sends to the Jewish people an enemy that if we study that enemy and their actions correctly, we'll be able to discern a flaw in us. In other words, the Torah perspective is that the enemies that we have, that God throws us, whether it was Greeks or Egyptians or the Nazis, or it could be Muslim fundamentalists, when we look at them, we're able to discern from them a weakness that we may have as Jews in terms of what we're bringing to the table. And as Rav Dessler writes, when we fix that up inside of ourselves, we'll be able to bring down the power that, that, re that they represent and that enemy and their evil will fall away. Interesting idea. We sort of use our enemies, the Torah says, as a mirror that we can look at and discern our own spiritual flaws and fix them up. If you look at the events going on in the world today, in Israel, how many people are, God forbid, Nebuch being stabbed and how much blood is being spilled, blood, sacrifice, all these suicide attacks, people giving up their lives, doing these attacks against Jews that they know are going to cost them their lives, they're doing it anyway. You see from our enemies an enormous amount of sacrifice, an enormous amount of self-sacrifice to do what they believe. I would suggest to you, and I'm pretty much telling you, the correct response as a Jew in terms of that is for us, each person, to look inside of ourselves and figure out how can we up our spiritual game. How can we bring more self-sacrifice as Jews to the table? You know, some people might say, oh, I like to host guests for Shabbat, but when do you want to host guests? You only want to host guests for Shabbat when it's easy, nice, convenient, the cleaning lady was just there that morning, and you had a relaxing week, you know? But there's times doing mitzvahs and doing a lot of good things are not necessarily so easy, comfortable, or convenient, you know? So that's the idea. How can we add... I'm suggesting to you something practical to work on. Each person, look on yourself and figure out how can I do 1% more, 2% more, stretch myself as a Jew past my comfort zones. Another way to phrase it is how can I add more fire to what I'm bringing to the table as a Yid, as a Jew, in terms of how I treat people, in terms of how I, I, I treat others, in terms of my relationship with God and the commandments, how can I bring more fire? And if you're asking, sacrifice, fire, how can I bring more fire? How, how, what's that about? You should know the Talmud speaks about in Tracti Baba Kama, 60B, this thing. God says, and I'm looking at a, my Talmud over here on the desk, it says that, God says that I lit the fire in Sion. When I destroyed the temple, when I caused ruination to Israel and I caused the exile, God says, I lit the fire in Sion. I'm the one, God says, who lit the fire in Israel and Jerusalem. And then God says in the Talmud, and in the future, I'm going to rebuild it with fire, with passion. Well, that's an interesting Gemara. God says, I lit the fire in Sion and I'm going to rebuild it in the future also with fire. I lit the fire and I'm going to rebuild it with fire. Simple question. How do you build a fire? As a lawyer, I just had a contractor here today coming to have me help him with some legal matters and LLC. 
And he knows how to build with wood and, and concrete and, and bricks and, and, and nails, I guess. But if I said to him, how do you build a fire? He would have, uh, he would have dismissed me and said, I, I don't want to have an incompetent uh, lawyer. Guy's crazy. So how do you build with fire? So the Hasidic Shesfarim, the Hasidic writing is in the Chassam Seifer also, they answer this and they explain that what is the fire that God's going to use to rebuild Israel and the temple to protect us and bring the Messiah and all of this? The answer is the fire of our Yiddishkeit, our passion for Judaism, our not just doing mitzvahs that are flat as a pancake, like flat line, boop, boop, but when we put passion into it, Fire, fire in our study, fire in our charity, fire in our prayer. I'm looking at the commentaries right now. That's what you're supposed to do. And then God is basically going to fuse all these little sparks of fire, our flame of our devotion, and God is going to reunite them. And that's what it means that he's going to uh, rebuild the temple and Jerusalem and Eretz Yisrael and protect us based on that. You should know the commentary called the Eitzrat Phyllis, Ha, um, has a commentary on that called the Dover Shalom and explains that in the future Hashem is going to bring down the walls of the third temple from heaven and it's going to be made out of fire which fits very b nicely back with this Chassam Seifer and the Gemara Baba Kama that's what it means that it's fusing all these sparks of fire and you should know that's why it says actually in Shemona Esrei that God is Boine Yerushalayim that God is the one who builds Jerusalem rebuilds Jerusalem what does it mean? Maybe we'll say in the future, when the Messiah comes, God will rebuild Jerusalem. What does it mean? Boy, New Shalim, build Jerusalem. The answer is, if you want to have a safe, healthy, spiritually connected, vibrant land of Israel, yes, we need the army. Yes, we need a lot of things. But really, we have to do our own part uh, in a spiritual sense. And that is what the Torah we observe in the mitzvahs we do with a fire. Each single one creates sparks of devotion, which God collects these little flames and sparks of our passion, our blood, our sacrifice to do what we need to as Jews and be proud Jews. And God collects all of it and he's going to use it to rebuild the temple. So anyway, if you're a Jew, speak up, do something, say something in any which way you can. If you are sensitive to spirituality, Torah and commandments, I would suggest you try to do a little bit more if you can. Each person pick your own way. I'm not here to judge. Just here to give you some Torah perspective. Anyway, hope that video was helpful to you. This is the short and sweet series, but I'm over 12 minutes already, but uh, what can I do? Anyway, this is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman from the Jewish Executive Learning Network. If any of these Jewish ideas in this video were of value to you, I will beg you maybe, if I have to, <laughs> necessary, but please share this video with others. So um, hopefully this could be a boost and a merit for everyone else. Uh, I hope some of my sparks... Uh, are able to rub off on you, and please rub off your enthusiasm for your Jewish heritage on others. May God protect the land of Israel. Be well. We'll see you the next time. Bye.